We're back with weather. So I'm 13 Chief Meteorologist Mary Matthews. Getting over here quickly. I'm never on time. <laughs> a little hustle behind the scenes. You know, the longer you're in this business, the more you're like, five seconds, this eternity. I can <laughs> right. get there. And they're like, Mary, <laughs> come on. We need your three shot. And you're like, okay. But you're here. I'm here. You're like, the graphics still got to roll. I got, yeah. I got days of time. Yeah. Not really. Anyway, it's okay. You're here now. Exactly. Oh, no. And, uh, you're talking about that system heading our way. I know. But for right now, it's glorious outside. I know. It yeah. is It is nice. We had a little cloud cover. Yep. I haven't seen a ton of sunshine this week, but uh, still not too bad. This system is about 1,200 miles away still. It's still hugging the coast of California. You can see that area of low pressure, that counterclockwise spin sitting about 150 miles west of San Francisco. Uh, still bringing an onslaught of moisture across parts of the Sacramento Valley. And flash flood watches across most of the coastal areas of California. So the low pressure center needs to do two things. I need it to do two things so that I can give you a little more information and that models will not go berserk. Uh, when the system pushes on shore, oftentimes models, they give us better data output. When they get a little bit closer, they also give us more data output. So we need those two things to happen. And because the system has been kind of riding down the coast of California, going very, very slow, it's really allowed for these models to be all over the place, which in turn kind of delays the information, the best information we want to tell you. But let me show you what we know so far. And that is the fact that this system is expected to come ashore over the next 12 to 24 hours. So likely here by about Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. We will stay with warmer than average temperatures through Thursday through Friday, and then we'll start to see those cooler temperatures set up across the region by Saturday. Uh, colder temperatures through Sunday. It is likely we're going to begin with a bit of a rain snow mix on Saturday afternoon with a changeover to a few flurries by Sunday and then clearing out for Christmas Day but much colder temperatures in the 20s. So here's a look at the lower resolution models that are starting to show us what we're expecting in terms of timing. Timing is still something where the models are all over the place. Usually about 24 hours uh, going by will kind of help uh, correct uh, some of the timing uh, discrepancies. But as we make our way through uh, Friday, we're still going to stay dry across the region. By Saturday morning, we should start to see a few flurries moving in across the high country. It's likely going to be Saturday morning through Saturday afternoon and then we'll start to get a bit of a rain snow mix Saturday night across I-25. And then as the system really gets going late Saturday night into Sunday, meaning the low pressure center surface low forms east of the Rockies, that counterclockwise spin helps to pull down colder temperatures from the north. It'll really help to give us more of a consistent snowfall, likely Sunday morning through Sunday afternoon. Uh, wrapping up by Christmas Day. So may see a few little flurries right before Christmas. It does look like the system is going to primarily target the high country and areas around the Palmer Divide, northern El Paso County and Teller County. Uh, Right now, though, uh, still a lot of details to iron out. The general consensus with the storm so far, though, has been that we clear out by Christmas Day and chilly temperatures will take hold behind the system. Here's a look at the future cast snow through Monday. Again, please keep checking back for updates. I don't love showing these forecast models that quickly uh, when we're five days out. I often feel like it's a bit scientifically irresponsible, but because this is a special occasion, we've got Christmas, we've got travel coming up. People want to know, what are you seeing? So I'm sharing that with you. Uh, the heavy wet snow targeting the high country by Saturday, the likelihood we get light to moderate amounts across the I-25 corridor through Sunday, but clearing out by Monday. So if you are going to be traveling locally on Sunday for Christmas Eve, this is a forecast you need to keep tuned into, especially if your plans include the high country. Tomorrow, cloudy though, temperatures in the 40s and 50s, westerly winds still gonna keep our temperatures warmer than average across I-25, around 61 degrees in Pueblo and 47 in Westcliff, 60s across the Eastern Plains tomorrow and a warm, and to the work week before the holiday weekend kicks off. Of course, you'll notice temperatures sliding back into the 30s and 40s by the weekend. Uh, does look like Christmas Day. We see a little bit more sunshine, but colder temperatures. I do think we're going to need to tweak these temperatures just a bit as we make our way into the weekend. It's probably going to be a little bit cooler than that 43 degrees on Sunday. Uh, looks like we could be more so in the 20s and 30s across the region. We'll have to see how that cold air plays out behind the system by Sunday. As that low pressure center sets up and pulls down that colder air from the north, that will give us the coolest round of 
air and that will happen Sunday and Monday. Of course, we'll keep you posted on the networks of KRDO. Definitely a forecast we have to keep watching uh, for travel around this time of year. Back to you guys. Very good deal. Thanks so much. Time for a look at our roads. We're seeing a lot.